Okay, suppose I've got an orthogonal matrix Q. Uh, an orthogonal matrix Q uh, with uh, eigenvector X. So, eigenvector eigenvector x and a concomitant to eigenvalue lambda so eigenvalue uh, lambda uh, with the uh, stipulation that uh, lambda uh, not be equal to positive or negative 1 okay uh, I'm going to show show that uh, the transpose of x times x is equal to 0 okay well, to, to prove this, uh, let me start off with a relationship between uh, the matrix Q, uh, the eigenvector X, and the eigenvalue lambda. So Q times X will be equal to lambda times X, just based upon what we know about uh, a matrix and its eigenvector and the eigenvalue. Well, I propose multiplying each side of this equation by its respective transpose. So on the left, I'm going to multiply by the transpose. So I'm going to have a qx, a transpose of that, times qx. And on the right side, I multiply the right side by its transpose. So lambda x, transpose of that, times lambda x. Okay? All right, so on the left side, um, I propose rewriting this. Uh, the qx, the transpose of that, if I want to rewrite this, uh, without the parentheses, uh, I can rewrite it as the transpose of x times the transpose of q. You, you notice how the, the order changes when I move the transpose operation inside the parentheses. Now this qx here, I'm not going to do anything to that, so that will still be q times x. And similarly on the right hand side of this matrix equation, when I take the transpose of lambda times x, uh, the order is going to reverse so x transpose times lambda transpose times lambda times x. Okay. Now remember that lambda is a scalar. Okay, meaning that the transpose of lambda is simply lambda. Okay, taking the transpose of a scalar, it does nothing to it. And on the left side of the equation, if we remember what it means to be orthogonal, then the transpose of Q times Q will be the identity matrix. So that turns out to be I. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite all this. Okay, this will become uh, the transpose of X times X. Okay, uh, that's this side. And the uh, right-hand side of this previous equation, that is this expression, uh, that's going to become transpose of X times uh, lambda times lambda, so that's lambda squared times x. Okay. All right, so rewriting this again, I'm going to have the transpose of x times x is equal to, is equal to a, a lambda squared is a scalar, so I'm going to write that as lambda squared. It's a scalar, so I can move it in the front uh, without uh, destroying any equality here. So lambda squared times the transpose of x times x. Okay. Uh, now, uh, why don't I move this to the left side of the equation? So just uh, using some elementary algebra here, what I will have is the transpose of x times x minus lambda squared times the transpose of x times x. Okay. And uh, I can factor out the transpose of x times x from both sides of this equation. Uh, so what I'll have is the transpose of x times x. Okay, factoring that out, I'm left with 1 minus lambda squared. Okay, and that's equal to 0. Okay. Now, as I stated at the beginning, uh, lambda is not equal to either positive or negative 1, meaning that certainly this is not going to be equal to 0. Okay, because of that stipulation that I that I set forth at the, the beginning of the proof. Uh, so if this is not 0, well, to multiply this by this and get 0, given that this is not 0, that implies that the transpose of x times x must be 0. So I'll say, therefore, the transpose of x times x must be 0, uh, which is what I was trying to show here. And so that is the end of the proof.